getting tired of believing all the lies you tell yourself. Happiness is your disguise. So what you're saying shouldn't come as a surprise to no one. You don't want to give a chance to nobody. Don't want to be for nobody. Rather be at peace with somebody. Somebody who loves you. What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Mac Ju. I'm back with another video. And today we got a special, special guest. I know y'all all been waiting for this. This be my blood brother, J Star. Wow. J Star, be exact. Yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, you feel me? We about to get into this Q&A for y'all, so y'all stay tuned. I got answers for y'all questions. So, Mr. Um, J Star. What's up with it? The first question we bring to you is, when are you bringing someone new to the family? Um, if y'all talking about like children, no time soon. Mm -hmm. But y'all talking about like a like a like a significant other, like something like that. Before the year ends, I'ma say that because I gotta play it right. Because the last person that I brought around the family, like they still kinda linger around a little bit. So I gotta make sure that I play this one right. But soon though, like soon, like end of the you know, before the end of the year. Four months to be exact. How many? Four. All right, so before before four months give, I'm gonna I got y'all. Four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, number two. Who's next? Why are you so toxic? First off, let me put this out here into the world. <clears throat> I am not toxic at all. I mean, look toxic. I dress toxic. I smell toxic because the cologne I wear is very, I would say it's toxic. All the colognes I wear. I'm not toxic though. I used to be toxic. Now, I would say I'm intoxicating. Like a drug, like alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Too much of me might mess your life up. But like the right amount, you have a great time. It's a vibe on this side, you feel me? It's a vibe. It's in my, my so what team. you're saying is you're not toxic? Mm -mm. Nope. Don't know where y'all... What? I don't know where these rumors come from. I'm not toxic, man. Again, I feel like I give off the vibes of somebody who's toxic because of how I look, the things that I say. But um, in all actuality, I'm not toxic. I'm intoxicating. Intoxicating. Yep. All right. And that's what I'm sticking with. That's and my y'all have your answer, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, why do you beef with light skin so much? That's a good question. I feel like this is the first time people actually get to hear me speak on this. So it's not a beef, I would say. Um, it's more or less me like putting y'all on game. I I deal with light skin people. I have some very close friends that are light skin. My daughter's a light skin. Um, and for the most part, they all have the same tendencies. They all have the same quality. So I just be putting people on game who don't know how light skin is, you know, how they act. Um, that's pretty much it. That's just how they go. So it's, it's not a beef. I love all light skins, all light skins. I pretty much love all people of all skin pigments. It's just that light skins, they try to hide the way that they really are, like the ways that they have, and that, that's just not okay. Be true to yourself. Be true to the skin pigment that you have. I'm not really a dark skin. I'm more of a, like a red bone, but I get looped in with dark skins because I have dark skin tendencies. So I'm true to that side of me. Light skins just need to be true to who they really are at the end of the day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there you have it. That's your answer. Um, who influences you the most or impact you the most? Uh, well, my kids, for one. I mean, like, it's a bunch of people. But, like, my kids, um, my immediate family... Um, my circle. It's just a lot of people behind the scenes that probably don't get to see 
that y'all probably don't get to see that keep the ball rolling on my end um, that enables me to do what I do every day or all the time. So I can't ever let them people down. So that's why I got to go as hard as I go and keep doing what it is that I'm doing. Interesting. Yep. Um, what age did you start rapping? Oof. Um. <clears throat> seriously, I say like 11, 12. That's when I started like pinning like music and stuff like that. But I say I've been musically inclined since I was like two. I would say wasn't in the picture. No, she wasn't here yet. Um, shout out to Uncle Sherrod. So our, our uncle, one of the dopest people ever to touch the, the the surface of earth. But that's who really like got me started with music at the age of two. I would say the first long the first song that I learned how to rap when I was two. I probably shouldn't even know at two, but I st I was musically inclined at about two years old. My grandmother's house on a, 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 tape, a tape player. Um, and then, like, I got serious about music. I would say, like, 11, I started, like, writing verses. And then 12, 13, 13 12, I um, got, like, super serious, joined, joined Durio family, and then everything else is just... Very interesting, Mr. J-Star. I'm drinking Hennessy, by the way. Hennessy, plug, plug. Water. I need y'all to sponsor me. Um, rap your favorite bar. For me? Or yeah. just in general? For you. I got a bunch, man. I be saying some, some stuff. You know? I be saying some stuff. It might go over people's head. Uh, my favorite bar. Y'all gotta give me a second. I gotta think. I don't write none of this down, so it's some stuff. Um. Oh man, I said this in a freestyle, and it kind of like it went over people's heads, but it was so like it was worded so good. You feel me? It was like um. What I said it's on SoundCloud. Um, Exit Eleven, my crew, my area, not the city. But if you blink, blink, acting brand new, I'll bury it. Like new, I bury it. Brand new, I bury. Yeah, like unique. You know what I'm saying? Like it be some stuff, man. I be saying I'm some. One, I be saying some stuff, man. Y'all just not listening. That's what it is. Y'all just not listening. They don't, they don't be hearing nothing. Nope. At all. <clears throat> Next question. What's up? Do you miss your dreads? Nah. No, man. Things was ruining my life. Um, so I got, you know, I had to get rid of that. So now you have the thought haircut. What is the thought haircut? That haircut. What's that? What you have? I just got a fade. I got a tape. It's, you know, a little taper on the sides and then the back and then the waves on swim. I don't really, you know, that's just what that is. A thought. That's the thought haircut. Technically, I ain't no thought man. I'm a vibe. I need. I need people to understand that. I am a vibe. A vibe. A whole vibe. That's it. <clears throat> Next question. Mm -hmm. Who was the song somebody made for and what's the story behind it? Another good question. Um, somebody, I did somebody months ago, probably like around Mardi Gras. Um, I drafted it, sent it out to a couple people, but like the, the basis of somebody is just conversations that I had with like a bunch of female friends about like just the experiences with in their relationship and stuff <clears throat> and like you know 
we build off of that, but then, like, in all actuality, when you listen to the song, it's true, because everybody just want to be loved. You feel me? Everybody just want to be loved. Nobody really want to beef. I, I avoid beef as much as possible. I don't want to be beefed out with nobody. Like, you know, I just want to be at peace and then be around people who love me. Regardless if it's one person, if it's multiple people, I think people just want to be loved at the end of the day. So the inspiration from it, it is not based on like just one person. Somebody is about everybody from different walks of life. Like all of that, man. I just feel like everybody genuinely wants to be loved for who they are and nobody really wants to be judged for the way that they want to be loved so that's that on that still streaming right now you feel me um the remix is out right now featuring cupid and neba plug plug we on the radio we about to hit like ten thousand streams by the time this come out we'll probably be like over ten thousand streams but like we you know i'm doing numbers you feel me tune in Tune in. If you haven't tuned in yet, you're really playing yourself. It's the intro to the to this channel. <laughs> what is intro. like? What y'all? Yeah, I, I, I know y'all be vibing to it. Like I I know y'all hear the whoa whoa in the in the beginning. Like I know y'all vibing to it. What what are y'all doing? Why are y'all not listening to this song what's every on? day? It's on the radio. Like what's I don't know. What's the next question? Um. Well, it's like the same question, but um, what keeps you motivated? Like, keep you going every day? This is probably going to be odd to some people, but if you do music, you'll understand, I would say. Or, like, if you're an athlete, like, any anything that's competitive, you'll understand. The people that I look up to musically, my musical icons, my idols, Jay-Z, Nas, Lil Wayne, Drake, um, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Big Sean, Wale, all of these guys are still active. Like, they are still actively in the studio. They still making new music every day, I feel like, you know? So it's like, I personally can't focus on competing with people that are in the same races or like in the same the same vicinity as me, the same building as me, like local rappers, and there's no disrespect to any local rapper that's doing what they're doing right now, but it's like, how can I compete with the man that's on the side of me when Jay-Z still making music? Jay-Z don't have to make music ever again. Lil Wayne don't ever have to make music ever again, like their legacies won't ever be forgotten. So it's like, I'm still competing with my idols every day. It's like I wake up and I'm checking the blogs. I'm on Billboard every day looking to see who in the number one through ten spot. So it's like that's why I keep doing what I do every day. Like I still got points to prove. And as long as I can still make words rhyme and put this with that and that with that, like it's it's every day. Like that's just how it's gonna happen. I'm still waiting on somebody to say my name in the song too. I've been, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm so ready for to say my name in the song. I don't care who it is. Just start. Just say it. Just say it. Just say it in a negative connotation, please. I'm begging you. This is Hennessy again, by the way. And there you have it. Uh -huh. So then the next question, um, as. Who made you start doing music? But you have stated that already. Right? Uncle Sherrod, man. Shouts out to Uncle Sherrod. It's the, one of the dopest people again on this planet. I owe it all to him. Not a portion of it. All to him. <laughs> again, if he wasn't the figure that he would, he is in my life, then I probably wouldn't be doing this right now. So it's like every Grammy speech, every everything. He gonna be a part of all of it because he was the he was the the found he is the foundation. Let me say that. Live action. Live action. Shout out to Uncle Sherrod, you feel me? Okay. So now this is gonna be our question. Oh, me and you? Me and you. All right. So what they wanna know? Um, number one, <laughs> who's more spotted? It's only right though because she's the baby and she's the only girl. 
So it's like, that's just kind of how that go. Because I kind of spoil it a little bit. I feel like everybody spoils Mac. It's Mac Juice. That's just how that go. Um, What's your favorite memory between us? Um, I don't know, man. There's so many. Let me go first. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> favorite memory, I don't remember. I really don't know how I remember this. But I was either in pre-K or kindergarten. Okay. I don't know. I think you had just graduated or it was your senior year or something like, like the end. Okay. So, I was very sick. I had um, high fever or something. I remember it. I don't know how. And you didn't have a car at the time. Mom and daddy was at work. And I was at Sunset Middle. And somebody had to come get me. But Mo couldn't leave from school. Right. Somebody had to come get me. This dude walked all the way to Sunset Middle. I couldn't really walk either because I was really weak. He came pick me up from school, check me out, carry me on his shoulder all the way back home, walking. And that's what I remember. This is real. That's a real thing. What? I would say my favorite memory is um, when you made homecoming court and I got to walk with you on the field um that was dope man because like you know I don't want to say I was like one of the most popular people when I was in high school but I was popular like people knew me you know what I'm saying it was like kind of to pass the torch I would say a little bit and like everybody know like that's my little sister like my little sister be on her her ditty like she be doing her ditty you feel me like that was dope that was a dope moment and we was both swagged out looking good you feel facts me? So. facts <clears throat> where do we see each other in five years all right um i see you with a college degree um, well off into whatever profession you decide to venture off into. Um, I don't know if I see you married in five years because I gotta, I, I, I gotta like dive like way into whoever decides to like step into that role. Because that ain't no like, you can't play with that. You can't play with this. Like this ain't something that I'm gonna allow anybody. This ain't something that I'm gonna allow anybody to just play with. I need y'all to understand that. I need y'all to understand that. But yeah. Um I see you like very successful in five years. I think your drive and the determination to just be successful at Anything that you do is going to put you well above what you're trying to reach. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, um, for me, um, in five years, I still don't see you married. Uh, That's, you know what? I, I'm not even mad at that. I'll be, I'm, I could share my age, huh? I don't, cause I don't look my age, that's why I don't mind sharing it, um, I'll be 36 in five years, look, I'ma say this, if the right person comes along, I could see myself, you know, settling down and really putting something on one of, I don't know which finger is the finger that you, one of these, I could see it. But 36, that's still young. Yeah. I say like maybe like 40, 40, 41 for marriage. Cause I ain't trying, I ain't I, like, you know, I don't know, but okay. You can keep going. I'm sorry, y'all. Yep. So yeah, that, um, I'm gonna see you as a great impactor to people. Cause um, the thing you say in your music, it really can touch someone and, you know, help them out. 
you want to be very successful like everything is already done it's in your hands already just keep doing what you're doing and we're gonna make it we already really made it so that's ready. huge facts man so, we're already on the path to what we getting ready to get into this is just the beginning this really that's all it is you feel me? that's it just a look just a little bit yeah man it's great um what is our biggest fear Ooh. i'll go first okay. so um i stated this a lot of times i don't know if i did in any of my previous videos but my biggest fear for me would be failure um i don't like when i mean of course you gotta fail to win but I'm trying to get to a point in time like where it's never like a failure for me. Like I just bounce back from it and get back to it. So I feel like that's my biggest fear or something like that. Um, I think failure is like my biggest fear too. Um, just because, man, it's like I don't want to say I have a lot riding on what I do, but it's so many points that I have to prove. Like, I got to prove a lot of stuff. Um, and I do this for so many different... I do what I do for so many different reasons. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I got kids. And, you know, my biggest fear... And that's why I say failure is, like, one of my biggest fears. Because I would hate to give up on what it is that, that I love to do. And my kids also might love to do something that's not, like, traditional. You know what I'm saying? And... They, the mindset is like, oh well, my dad stopped doing what he loved to do, so I might, I might as well just stop doing what I love to do because you know he did it, and I, I might as well do it too. So like, that's one of my biggest fears is to fail or to like just give up, man. Because it's like your moment is like right around the corner. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but it's like your moment. <clears throat> To reach whatever it is you destined to reach is like really right around the corner. So it's like you just got to stay patient and stay diligent and stay, and stay persistent when it comes to like reaching goals and stuff like that. Because, I mean, y'all y'all heard I've been doing music since I was like 11, 12 years old. I'm 31 right now and I'm finally reaching the breaks that I <clears throat> was supposed to reach years ago but I'm finally reaching them now so it's like you just gotta stay persistent and stay like focused on what it is your goal is and go reach that you feel me like Michael Raymond says if you don't quit you win all the time 10 times out of 10 100% of the times don't quit don't this cup mm -hmm. running a little um what's next What's the most annoying thing we ever did to each other? There's only one memory that comes to mind, man. <clears throat> she was young, like really young, man. And like, you know, coming across like money when she was young was like really hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I had my little like academic job so it's like, you know, you only get checks from that, like, once every blue moon. But I was, you know, I was I was doing what I had to do. And I remember I got a check, man. And I was, you know, I got the next telephone. Like, my cousin, we was chirping with one another, you feel me? Um, and I just had, like, cash, you know? So what I did was I was like, I got to keep making money. So, you know, my mom, my mom was a Sam's Club member. I don't know if she still is, but she was one at that time. So, like, I was like, look, man, I'm about to, like, trap this out. Like, go to Sam's, here's some money. I need you to buy, like, some Skittles and some some chips. You feel me? I'm about to, like, thug it out. I'm about to start selling this to, like, the little kids where we live when they get off school. And that's how I'm going to make my money. Because I'm in high school. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need cash. I had a pack it was like a six pack of gum. I was in high school. If y'all been in high school, I'm pretty sure everybody watching this has been in high school. You know how essential gum is to high school students. You know what I'm saying? Everybody be bumming gum. They want gum. And I was the gum dude. And it was good gum. It was Orbit. 
It was the stuff that was expensive, right? And I'd take a pack every day. I'd take a pack to school every day because I had it. I was the dude that had the gum. You 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 know, you need a gum. You know who to come to when you need gum because I had the gum. Bro, I got home one day after basketball practice. And I think I had like three packs of gum left because I was doing inventory like, you know, all the gum was gone. The packs were still there, but the gum was gone. Like the packaging for the gums was still there, but all the gum was gone. Like she chewed three packs of gum in less than like three hours. And then when she got confronted about it, she was like, I didn't do that. Cause I didn't. I, did, I, don't, I don't know who did that. I don't, I don't know. That's the only, like, I remember this vividly. My mom, or well, our mama will talk about this all the time. She brings it up all the time. But, like, that's really one of, that's the only moment I can think of where I was like. Right. Till this day, I still don't know where they going. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying, bro? I don't, I don't really have an annoying moment. Not really. But... Something that just be on my mind when you and your friends would be together. Mm -hmm. Y'all would just work on my nerves. Oh, I mean, that's just how that go. Shouts out to them. Shouts out to them boys, man. You feel me? My crew, my squad, my bros. Shouts out to them boys, man. I ain't saying no names. Y'all know who y'all are. Shouts out to them. I'm going to be to work. And I'm just there, you know? You're just, saying, you're just in the mix. Can't watch TV. No. Nope. Can't do nothing. No. Nope. I feel like we was putting you on game, though, to know exactly what you would possibly be dealing with when you become of age. I, I, that's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's your big bros, too. Y'all taught me a lot there. Taught you a lot. They're going to always look out for you when I'm not around and they around. Like, that's just how that go. Mm -hmm. Did we find it? I don't know what's going on. He did some coke. Bro, y'all would be surprised at how many people do coke. Like, it's a bunch of people. We're not going to speak on that, but it's it's so many people that do it, and they just functioning. Like, it's crazy. But we got some more questions. I just feel like he crying. <laughs> uh, how does it feel to watch me grow through the years? Um, Man, like, it's crazy. Because... I was the only child for 12 years and you know I never expected to have a sibling and then like I have a sibling who is literally like one of my best friends like you know I feel like the relationship we have isn't even like brother sister it's more like like this is like one of my homies like I call her she calls me like she knows what the vibe is and it's like to see you grow from like a high school student to a college student to now a woman. I'm going to call it what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because she handles everything that she needs to handle on her own. Um, she's never looking for a handout. <clears throat> and as like a big brother, as somebody who, you know, has 12 years of life experience more than her, it's, it's a blessing to see that, man, because... You know, the younger generation, majority of the younger generation, to me, nowadays, man, is like, they lost. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the proper guidance to tell them what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, they just kind of move on their own. And a lot, of the, the, a lot of the decisions that they make are not the right decision. So it's like... <clears throat> To see that and to know, like, you know what I'm saying? She could definitely call me whenever she needs to call me to get insight on some stuff that she might not be sure about, man. Like, that's a, again, that's a blessing. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of everything that she embodies as a person, as a woman, as a sister. Like, I love it all. You feel me? As an auntie, too, you know? My kids look up to her. My oldest definitely looks up to her. I don't even think, excuse me, I don't even think my oldest knows that that's like her aunt because she kind of looks at her like it's a 
like a big sister. And that's the relationship that I would always want my kids to have with a sibling, regardless if it was a brother or a sister. Like, like you know, like that shit, like whatever they say, like know that they telling you this from like experience. They ain't telling you this just to ruin your your situation. It's, it's coming from a, a place of I've been through this. I know what this is. Listen to me. Make your own decision at the end of the day. But know what I'm telling you is coming from a place of like personal experience. Like, so, you know. Yeah. Okay. I ain't got no way in this thing. Let's go. Wow. Last question. Um, what do we have in common? Ooh. We got a lot of stuff in common. Probably more than people would expect us to have with this age gap. We got a lot of stuff in common because I'm still young. I don't think people realize that like age ain't nothing but a number. Rest in peace to Aaliyah. Ain't nothing but a number. Rest in peace, Aaliyah. Shout out to Pretty Ricky. Um, I think our fashion sense. We have a lot of com a lot of stuff in common as far as our fashion sense goes. We 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 stay swaggy. We stay fresh. Um, I think our life goals are a lot of the same. I think we both want the best out of life for both of us. Um. We look alike. I don't think people realize how much we actually look alike. Like, we both cute AF. I'm not going to curse, but we both cute AF. Like, for real, for real. That's another thing. Come. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, we're both talented. Mackenzie can sing. I don't know if y'all know. Y'all as in everybody that's watching this. Mackenzie can really sing. Mackenzie just don't show y'all that she can sing, but she can really sing. Like, like I'm talking about, like, not even on no, like, oh, you know, I sing here and there, like, on some church type stuff. Like, Mackenzie can really sing, like, American Idol, The Voice competition type stuff. But, yeah, like, we're talented as far as, like, that goes, like, in the arts, like, music, writing, like really good at that so that's that's where i'm at with it what you feel about it i agree with all what you said that's definitely we have a lot in common yeah brother and sister man well, that's how that goes. well guys that was all of our questions um before we leave out of here i'd like to give a shout out to giovanni mm -hmm. and original is Worth more than a copy. Big facts. I want to give a shout out to Nike. You feel me? Because I feel like they sponsor me. Um, uh, shout out to Nike because of everything that's currently going on in the world today. With um, division and diversity and, and racism. Nike was like one of the only brands to stand on the side of the people. For everything that was going on A representative from Nike Or their spokesperson Quoted Was quoted On Twitter by saying I'd rather be on the right side of history Than to be on the wrong side To make a profit And ever since I read that And I saw that Everything that I buy now As far as a brand goes Is always going to be Nike So shout out to Nike Shout out to everything they got going on Y'all stream my music You feel what I'm saying I'm everywhere, man. I'm on Apple Music. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Tidal. I'm Amazon Music, YouTube. Y'all streaming, man. The more numbers I do, the more people pay attention to me and the more I can do for the people that are around me. We so, impact lives. That's it, man. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm cute. Okay. <laughs> man, make sure y'all like, comment, and Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure y'all press that post notification bell. Yes. All our information will be down below. Make sure y'all share this video. All that. And we're going to mess with y'all another time. See it in your eyes. Sick and tired of believing all the lies you tell yourself. Happiness is your disguise. So what you saying shouldn't come as a surprise to no one. You don't wanna give a chance to nobody. Don't wanna be for nothing.